With the news of Arizona and Arizona State joining the Big 12 in 2024 alongside Colorado and Utah, and BYU, which joins this year in 2023, thoughts of the newly 16-team league utilizing a pod system for their westernmost schools have come to the forefront. Some of these models even include Texas Tech, famous for their West Texas roots, in a pod with the Arizona schools in a blast to the past. It reminded me the last time these three schools shared a conference. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. The Arizona schools were WAC schools before they joined the June Pac-8, and before they joined the Big 12, the Red Raiders are part of the Southwest Conference. They weren't ever in the same conference, were they? Well, yeah, actually, they all were a part of the same conference a long time ago, the Border Conference. While the Big 12 was clamoring over the Four Corners editions, they forgot the state of New Mexico, right? Well, the Border Conference didn't. How about a couple Division II and three teams to add in there, too? FCS? Why not? The Border literally had it all. The Border Conference may very well be one of the weirdest college conferences in NCAA history, focusing on regionality over college sizes, and was gone just as soon as it was created. It came and went like a tumbleweed across the New Mexico dirt without any of the force of an Arizona monsoon and without leaving hardly any West Texas oil derrick-sized marks. Let's take a further look at one of the desert's greatest mysteries, the Border Conference. In the early days of college conferences, the type of schools you were associated with wasn't as important as their location. This can be seen no clearer than with the Michigan Intercollegiate Athletics Association, which is the oldest college sports conference in American history, established in 1888, and with all of its schools located in a very close proximity to each other. But even in that area of the country, it wasn't hard to reach campus to campus because the areas between them were highly populated. Compare that to the arid American Southwest, famously inhospitable and with more than enough challenges to comfortably schedule athletics events, let alone form colleges. By the 1930s, the Dust Bowl and Great Depression had disastrous effects on efforts to populate the region, which aside from agriculture, focused on mining as their primary export. First this was done by poor white people, then it was done by poor Hispanic immigrants. Uh, the Southwest was not a good place to be in 1931. According to Ryan Swanson in his book, A Dumping Ground for Tramp Athletes, The Rise and Fall of the Border Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, with the Sun Belt population boom still years in the future, in the 1930s, even the region's biggest cities barely registered on the national scene. Most of the outposts of the BIAC were barely cities at all. The lack of modernized airplane travel made it truly improbable that teams in Arizona or New Mexico could effectively join conferences with teams from, say, California or the more populated parts of Texas. Each of these teams were on an island, but they were on islands together. Out of the desert came a strong desire to play sports interconnected. And despite being isolated from much of the rest of the country, these colleges wanted nothing more than to find a way to play consistently against nearby schools. So to better visualize the timeline of this thing, let's go year by year to see the important events as they happen. 1931. Athletic heads at the University of Arizona, Arizona State Teachers Colleges at Flagstaff and Tempe, University of New Mexico, and New Mexico College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts decide to formulate a conference to help ease scheduling in the Southwest. All of these schools are current Division I FBS schools, save for Northern Arizona, which is FCS. This conference would be known as the Border Intercollegiate Athletics Conference. When the football schedule was being formulated, it was determined that the winner of the conference, as determined by conference record, would play in the Sun Bowl in El Paso, starting in 1936, against an at-large team. Oddly enough, though, the first Sun Bowl played between two college teams featured New Mexico A&M against eventual border member Hardin Simmons. Arizona State, in fact, holds the dubious honor of playing in the worst ever bowl game, at least by scoring standards, a 0-0 tie against the Catholic Cardinals in 1940. 1932. Texas Technical College, then the Matadors, becomes the first university from the state of Texas to join the conference after missing out on joining the Southwest Conference with the other Texas schools. 1935. The conference adds what is now known as UTEP, then known as the College of Mines and Metallurgy of the University of Texas. They would later become Texas Western in 1949 before rebranding fully to the University of Texas El Paso in 1967. 1941. The conference stretches further into Texas, adding both Hardin Simmons in Abilene and West Texas State Teachers College in Canyon. This was the largest the conference ever got. 1952 sees the first detraction in the conference. New Mexico, who leaves for the Skyline Conference. A year later, Northern Arizona leaves for the New Mexico Conference. In 1957, Texas Tech leaves the border to join its other large Texan brethren schools in the Southwest Conference, having always wanted to join. 
The conference died in 1961, as other schools began wanting to go their separate ways. Both Arizona schools left for the WAC in 1963, following New Mexico, who had already moved to that conference from the skyline. The other four remained in the four-team conference until it, too, dissolved in 1964, and they became independents, although for the final two years, the conference was not considered a full conference due to its small size. The all-time football championship leader was the Texas Tech Red Raiders, finishing their time with seven outright championships and one contested championship. Arizona State won both the first and the final football championship in conference history, offering a bittersweet bookend to a conference specifically made for the Southwest. Why am I only talking about football? Well, unfortunately, very little is available out on the internet about the other sports sponsored by the border, of which I was able to certify that men's basketball was one, but not many other sports. I assume it was a full conference and that sports like baseball and track were also supported. So where are these teams now? Well, obviously, Texas Tech is about to welcome Arizona and Arizona State to the Big 12 after years in the Pac-12. New Mexico, after turning down a Big 12 invite in 1996, is still playing in the Mountain West after splitting the WAC up in half. New Mexico State and UTEP are languishing in Conference USA, being left out of the Mountain West when it split from the WAC, and have desperately been trying to find their way in since then. UTEP, as Texas Western in 1966, did win a national championship in basketball, furthering the progress of desegregation in college sports, especially in the state of Texas. Northern Arizona, down at FCS, is playing in the Big Sky, while West Texas A&M is in the D2 Lone Star Conference, and Hardin-Simmons is playing in the Division III American Southwest Conference. Looking back, it's clear why the border failed. Growing ease of travel to places like the Arizona and Texas metropolitan areas made a conference specifically for desert dwellers no longer as necessary, and the lack of cohesion between schools like the massive Arizona State and tiny Hardin-Simmons created a clear disconnect. The conference collapsed over 20 years before television deals became commonplace or had any real major importance to conferences, but it's easy to see why Texas Tech wouldn't want to share a field with, say, Northern Arizona every season, more or less West Texas. So when the Arizona schools enter the Big 12 next season alongside their former Pac-12 counterparts, much of everything east of them won't look too familiar. But one team in Lubbock will, an odd echo of an era long past and one of the weirdest conferences in college sports history.